Hello everyone, welcome back to this co-integration tutorial in Eviews. This is the second part where we are going to be talking about the error correction model and the diagnostics. So as an overview on the first video, we determined that exports and imports in Canada over the period 1961-2005 are co-integrated. So the model that we estimated in levels on our first video is called the long run model. Now it's time to estimate the short run model, which is the error correction model. Let's talk about the error correction model. As we have seen on the first video that we have estimated the long run model, the variables were non-stationary in levels, but they were co-integrated. That's what we determined with the Phillips Ulieris and the England Granger tests. And this is the model that we had estimated. Now we have to estimate the short run model, which is the error correction model. So in order to do so, the first thing that we need to do is to have the variables, they need to be in differences. This is in their stationary form. So I have here in this equation, you can see that the exports then are going to be in differences. The imports are going to be in differences. And then what we need to incorporate to the model is the error correction term, which are the residuals of the long run regression, but lagged one period. So when we estimated this model in the first video, we saved the residuals. And these then, okay, this is going to be the residuals lagged one period. So if you see here, I said plug equation one, which are the residuals lag one period into the equation two. If you plug this in here, you're going to get to this equation. So that's the error correction model. Let's talk about some considerations of the error correction term. In here, I have included again, the short run model. And in here, this is going to be the error correction term. Beta two, is going to be the error correction term estimated coefficient, where this value should be between negative one and zero. If you get values that are out of the range, those are going to be explosive results. You will need to review or re-estimate your model. The coefficient, the beta two, determines the speed of adjustment towards the long run equilibrium. This means that the deviations from the long run equilibrium are corrected gradually by this error correction term through a series of partial short run adjustments. So again, we are going to be out of the equilibrium and this error correction term is going to be adjusting to, towards the long run equilibrium. The reason why it's negative is because if there is a positive uh, disequilibrium, then the negative error correction term will make it go down. While if the way around, if it's a negative um, disequilibrium, then the negative error correction term will make it positive. So that's the intention of this error correction term. So now let's go into views and we are going to estimate the short run model. We will try to estimate this equation. In views, recall from the first video, we had transformed the variables. This LM means the logs of the imports and LX means the logs of the exports. Now what we have to do is to estimate the short run model. So I'm going to go into quick estimate equation. And in here, you're go it's going to appear the equation that we will try to estimate. So recall then that we need first in differences, the log of the exports. Then we need to include the constant. Then we have to add the differences of the logs of the imports. And finally, we need to add this error correction term. Recall that the error correction term is basically the residuals of the long run regression, but lacked one period. So remember from the first video, we have saved the residuals from the long-term regression. It's the residuals, which I call residuals LT for long-term. So we are going to include that variable here, residuals LT. But as I mentioned, it has to be lagged one period. So I open parentheses, I put negative one, and this is telling if views that we need to use the, the variable lagged one period. We're going to leave these squares. We're gonna hit okay. And here, we get the estimation output. So just some observations. Here we have the coefficient estimate for um, for the imports. This residuals is the error correction term. This is the coefficient. As you can see, the coefficient is negative 0.11, which that is between negative one and zero. So that's good. And finally, we have here that the um, it's statistically significant. So you see the value is 0 0.0006. So that's correct, that's good. If your error correction term wasn't significant, 
then this model is not appropriate. This error correction term will not be appropriate to include in this in this short run model. In this slide, I have included the short run and the long run estimated models so we can review together what we have done throughout this tutorial. In the first video, we estimated this model, it is showing the long run relationship. And in this video now, we have estimated the short run model, which is showing the short run dynamics. So as you can see, in the long run, a 1% increase in the imports is going to increase exports by 1.02%. However, in the short run, the 1% increase in the imports is going to increase exports by 0.64%. So there is clearly a discrepancy between the long run and the short run. So this error correction term is going to be adjusting yes, these differences to make it go to the long run equilibrium. So I have included also here a table where we can discuss a little bit the values. The constant doesn't really have a interpretation, so this term can be disregarded. However, here we have the imports, and we can see that the effect on the long run is a 1% increase, as I mentioned, increases exports by 1.02. And in the short run is 0.63. Both of these p-values are indicating that this variable is statistically significant, so that's good. And in the error correction term, we don't have here, of course, in the long run, in the in the first model that we estimated, we don't have an error correction term. But for the short run, we do know that we have one, we have included it, and we can see that it's negative 0.11. And this value is between negative 1 and 0, so that's good. That's what we were looking for, a value between that range, and also is statistically significant. As I mentioned before, if this value wasn't statistically significant, then the short run model is not appropriate. And finally, let's, let's see how we can interpret this coefficient as well. So the coefficient, as I mentioned, is negative 0.11, suggesting that almost 12% of the discrepancy between the long run and the short run, this is this discrepancy is going to be corrected within a quarter. So just to summarize, 12% of that discrepancy is going to be corrected every quarter. Remember that we're working with quarterly data. So if you're working, we're working with monthly or yearly data, then that would mean that the error correction term would be correcting per month or per year that percentage. Now that we have estimated the short run model, we need to do some diagnostics. The first thing that you will want to take a look at is the normality test of the residuals. So we're going to be using the Sharkevera statistic for testing normality. We know that the null hypothesis for this test is that the residuals are normally distributed. So that means that if our p-value is bigger than 0 0.05, at the 5% level, we are saying that the residuals are normally distributed. So let's go into views and let's perform this. In views, we're going to go into view. I'm going to go down to residual diagnostics and I'm going to hit in histogram normality test. So we can clearly see that this acts like this looks like a normal distribution. This is the Harkevera uh, and here is the p value. So we can see that this value is bigger than 0 0.05. We don't really need to look at it because you can you already tell this is a normal distribution, but this is telling you that the errors are normally distributed. So that's good. So let's go back into the slides and see what's the next step. Now we have to check for the serial correlation. So as we have lagged variables, the Durin Watson statistic is no longer valid. So you're going to be checking for the correlogram and in particularly to the last column, which is the Q statistic. And the null hypothesis is there is no serial correlation. So we are going to do that first. And then what you can do as well is you can conduct a test if you want, the Bruce Godfrey test, which the null hypothesis is no serial correlation. So we are going to be doing both things. Let's go into views and perform this test. We're going to go into view, again, residual diagnostics, and we're going to hit in correlogram Q statistics. We're going to probably just, it's fine. We can leave it as default 36, doesn't really matter at this point. Um, so we can see in here that all this looks very good. And here we have the Q statistic that I was talking about, this column. And this is the p-value. So if it's bigger than 0 0.05, we are saying that there is no autocorrelation. So you can see that all these values are bigger than 0 0.05, okay? So that's good, that's what we are looking for. Alternatively, as I mentioned, we can do the Bruce Godfrey test. We're going to go then into view. I'm going to go into residual diagnostics and do the serial correlation. Uh, and this is the Lagrange multiplier means test. 
I'm going to hit OK. And you can see now that, as I mentioned, GBUS is going to be producing the Bruce Godfrey serial correlation test. And the null hypothesis is that there is no serial correlation at up to 2 lakhs. You can see that the p values okay, are bigger than 0 0.05. So we're confirming then that there is no serial correlation in, in these residuals. So that's very good as well. So we will go back now into the slides and see what's the last step in the residual diagnostics. So now we have to check for heteroscedasticity. So you, what you should know from heteroscedasticity is that in the presence of, of it, standard errors are no longer valid. So we are going to conduct the Brush Pan and Godfrey test where the null hypothesis is that there is homoscedasticity. We're going to go into view. I'm going to go into the residual diagnostics again and hit heteroscedasticity test. Here, as you as I mentioned before, we are doing the Brush Pan and Godfrey test. I'm going to hit OK. And what you can see is that the null hypothesis, as I mentioned, was homoscedasticity, and we cannot reject this hypothesis. So there is no heteroscedasticity, so that's good. You can see that all these values are bigger than 0 0.05. We cannot reject the hypothesis of homoscedasticity. So we have confirmed then with all these tests that the model diagnostics are fine. This is appropriate. So the last step that I want to show you is doing some forecasting. I'm going to show you how to do an in-sample forecast to see how our model that we have estimated for the short run performs. So we're going to hit in the forecast option in here. Here uh, the options are what series we want to forecast. Yes, we want to forecast the log of the exports. I'm going to change the name that is providing to the variable. If use is going to create this new variable, I would like to call it forecast so it's easier to, to identify. The forecast sample is fine. The method is going to be a dynamic forecast. Uh, that's okay, uh, we're going to include the standard errors and in the output I would like to have not only the forecast but I would also have like to have the actual values so then we can compare. So I'm gonna hit OK if you use here has produced the graphs so just as an observation the blue line is the forecast and the green line is the actual series. So you can see that they are closely aligned it's, it's, a, it's a good in sample forecast. So that's pretty much what we have estimated then with our short run model. And this is going to be all for today's tutorial. We have seen in our first video what is cointegration, how we determine if two variables are cointegrated. And in this video, we have reviewed how to estimate the error correction model and to do some diagnostics in that model and then do this in sample forecast. So if you like this video, I would like to invite you to subscribe to my channel. I'm going to be including many more content. Uh, a lot of the tutorials that are coming are going to be related with uh, also cointegration. I'm going to be talking about vector error correction models. I've seen some people has asked me about it. I have to also do some videos about Garch models, uh, Sarima models. There's a lot of things that a lot of people has asked me about. So stay tuned to the channel. Um, because those tutorials are coming. So thank you very much for watching. Have a great day.